Hey there, Rick Sage, recording at the Rimrock Studios in Bishop, California. Welcome to Season 2 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, where I speak with retailers, brand managers, athletes, executives, and others in the outdoor biz and share their stories, tips, advice, productivity tricks, and ideas you can use to take your career or business to the next level. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. I've used Audible for many years now. I'm on the road a lot, and Audible allows me to enjoy the great books I discover or are recommended by friends. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the Outdoor Biz Podcast. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Start your 30-day free trial with Audible today. Hey guys, Rick here. Just want to give you a heads up that I'm taking a couple weeks off to work on the podcast as I prepare for Season 3 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast. No major changes, just a couple tweaks and adjustments to a few things. I have lots of great interviews in the works for Season 3, so please enjoy these replays of four of our most popular episodes from Season 2, and I'll be back with more great interviews, advice, stories, and insights in Season 3. Enjoy! This episode is with Smartwool President Travis Campbell. We talk about how he's settling into Steamboat and his role at Smartwool, his experience with Sage Farbank, and the work the industry continues to do in the public lands battle. Welcome to the show, Travis. How you doing? Good, Rick. Thanks. Uh, Appreciate being here. Yeah, glad to have you. So the first question I have to ask is, how is the fishing in New Zealand? You said you only got a day, <laughs> right? Uh, you know what? I, I ended up getting about three hours, oh. and, uh, and so I can't even call it a day. Right. But uh, I would describe it as a, a good wedding of the appetite. I, I want to go back. Yeah, that's what um, I hear, yeah. You know? Three hours was awesome. Uh, I'd like to have 10 or 12. Yeah, was that your first um, time down there? It was, it was my first time in New Zealand, definitely my first time fishing down there. Yeah. Um, and it, it looked just as described. Beautiful water, beautiful country, uh, big fish. They just didn't seem to want to eat my fly. Well, it's big smart fish, right? in that water, like, super clear, and they just, the fish are spooky. It's crazy clear water. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, and, and you see them, I mean, you can see the fish. They see you. Um, there's, it's definitely a different game than I'm used to. Right, right. Well, cool. So how did you get ex- yeah. get into the outdoors? Was that as start fishing as a kid, or how'd that come about? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I spent my first six years, my family lived down in Miami, um, of all places. It's funny, I think of myself as a Northwesterner. Yeah, I um, too, but yeah. We lived, in, <laughs> we lived in Miami till I was six, and, and oh, wow. it seemed like we spent every weekend down in the Florida Keys. And my family would just go down there, and we'd camp, and we'd fish. And nice. um, my mom always tells the story of I caught my first fish at two years old, <laughs> and, I, and I never stopped. Awesome. <laughs> right. Was that were you fly fishing at two years old? No, no, oh, for okay. sure not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was. Uh, I don't think I, I. I probably didn't even really figure out fly fishing until I was twelve or thirteen. Okay. Uh-huh. And um, you know, and 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 I still, I, you know, I'm a passionate fisherman. I, I just like catching fish. Yeah. All things being equal, I like to catch them on a fly rod. Right. But uh, if I need to, I'll use a spinning rod. Um, <laughs> I'm the same. <laughs> definitely not a purist. Yeah, I'm the same. <laughs> so, how did you get in, into the outdoor industry? What was your first outdoor job? Yeah. So, you know, I came out of college and I, I went into the consulting industry. Um, not, not necessarily because I wanted to be a consultant is sort of for lack of knowing really what I wanted to do. And, um, I did a bunch of years there and then I, I decided to get out very intentionally and I went back to business school. And when I was looking for a summer job between first and second year, I just applied to companies that made outdoor stuff I was really passionate about. And oh. so I tried to get, yeah, I tried to get jobs with fly fishing brands and mountain bike brands and ski brands. And, um, the only folks that would have me were Sage, uh, in the fly fishing space. And, uh, That's and a so good I got spot a summer to job. Land. Totally. I, <laughs> you know, I, I had to pinch myself at the time and, and frankly, I still sort of pinch myself. It was, um, super lucky, super fortunate to, to get that opportunity because it ultimately turned into a full-time job when I finished business school. Right. right. And, uh, and so I went from being a summer intern to, to working for the company full time when, when I finished school. And you were there for a handful of years, right? Almost 10 years? You know, a big handful, yeah. I ended up doing, uh, I think it was 16 years. Wow, um, okay, yeah. Yeah, and we you know we evolved that company from being just Sage to we ended up buying Reddington and then we bought Rio right. and, uh, and turned it into a company we called Farbank Enterprises. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think I spent my last eight or so years as CEO of that enterprise. Yeah, awesome. I was talking to uh, Bill Dawson the other day about uh, oh, yeah. some stuff. Yeah, yeah. good old Billy D. Billy D. He's, um, he's still repping Sage. 
He is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. One, one, he's one of the good ones. Yeah, he is for a good sure. guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. So, uh, how are you settling into your role at the Outdoor Industry Association? That's also new this year, in addition to your role at Smartwool. Yeah. You know, the good news for me, I, I had been on the board for the Outdoor Industry Association for seven or eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, my new role as chair, um, you know, it's definitely a change. Mm-hmm. The, the chair role ends up having a fair amount more responsibility. Right. Um, but at least it doesn't feel crazy new to me um <laughs> you know the you know, players and, and you, know say, the, you know the landscape yeah right yeah i know the landscape and and the cool thing is we, we've got a really strong board um it, it, for the outdoor industry and then a, a strong group of staff and, and a really great leader in amy roberts yeah and right. so you know my transition into that role uh, i think has been pretty seamless mm-hmm. um you know it's not to say the industry isn't in a tumultuous time between show moves and what we've got going on in the federal government right now and yeah. um there's no shortage of work or, or shortage of complexity but right, right. um you know i feel like we got a good we got a good team in place and i think we're generally doing good stuff you guys are doing great work yeah no it's it's awesome i interviewed uh, stacia the other day she's going to be on uh, in a oh, couple yeah, of weeks right so, yeah so yeah we talked about the skip yell future leadership academy and all that stuff you guys are doing great work so keep that up that's awesome appreciate um, that thank you yeah and what are industry members saying about 2017 are they pretty happy with how it all went down or it was it's a little bumpy we had yeah. some more retailer closings and yeah you know i, I used the word tumultuous um <laughs> a a second ago. you know it, it remains a i think a really um rocky time in the space and i you know in thinking about it i feel like the industry is no longer moving sort of in lockstep either up or down you know we're, mm. we're in this phase of the industry where we've got sub segments that are moving up and we've got sub segments that are moving down and and mm-hmm. it's just noisy yeah. you know and mm-hmm. so it's I feel like it's hard for me to say at a macro level that the industry had a really good 2017. I think, you know, as I've talked to folks, I've talked to folks that crushed it in 17. And and then I've talked, you know, just as you said, a bunch of people went bankrupt in 2017. Yeah. And so, you know, one of the things about the outdoor biz is it's a really diffuse fragmented industry as a rule Mm -hmm. um you know there's suppliers there's brands there's retailers you know we're we're lots of little companies spread out all over the country and the world and so um you know it just feels like we're in this uh, interesting phase just lots of noise you Mm -hmm. know i talk about it internally with smart well you know this is a phase where i think businesses are going to make big moves either up or down there's not a lot of just kind of plugging along yeah um and so uh, that's just i think related to the to the pace of change and the level of noise. Um, yeah, that's that a good way to put it, because for many years, you know, we were just kind of like, you know, you just plug and play, right? Here comes another year. Totally. You count on who you're going to sell to. They're going to buy 20% more, and away we go. And, yep. man, last, I would say, what, five years? Bumpy road. Yep. Yep, totally. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and I, I think as an industry, we were sort of used to that consistency of right. just plugging along and growing and growing and growing and growing. And now now we're in this phase of like, whoa, maybe we're not all growing. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and it's hard to understand exactly what's going on. There's just a lot of different storylines. Yeah. And what are, are people hoping to see improvement in specific areas? I mean, we all look, look for it to get better, but what are people saying about the improvement they're looking for? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I think that's an, another one of those interesting ones. I, I think, you know, I think everybody would love to see a little more consistency at retail yeah. um, and just, <laughs> you know, fewer, fewer people going out of business. Yeah. Um, you know, and so I, I think within that, obviously, I, I think everybody would, would hope for a less promotional retail environment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think outdoor at its best is a full price industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. And I think, you know, sort of structured to be that. And so we operate best in that space. Right. Um, you know, I, I think we'd love to see uh, a little less chaos coming out of D.C. Um <laughs> And and I'd say negativity. You know, yeah, I, no I think we were really fortunate in the last administration. They they got the outdoor industry from my perspective, meaning they understood that we were we were creating jobs and mm-hmm. we were an important economic sector and um, you know those things that politicians generally like. And mm-hmm. this administration just has not seem to understand that in the same manner so um, you know we continue to try and educate them yeah that's a different um, world out there yeah, yeah and then, you know I guess the other just I think people a little bit of industry I'll call it stability and, and unity um, probably too right mm-hmm. just um, you know, there's just been a lot of noise yeah. and, uh, 
you know, I think uh, it's a fractious time. And, and I so. think this industry, likes, this industry likes unity. You know, I mean, we like yeah, being yeah. part of this big giant tribe doing good stuff. And, uh, and so I think everybody would be excited to get back to that storyline. Yeah, it's almost like we've been on this great adventure trip, you know, whether it's a backpacking trip or a ski trip, and, and we have had perfect weather, perfect conditions, no issues, and now all of a sudden the wind's blowing, there's snow and rain. It's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, we don't like this. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, no, I, I think that's a good analogy. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, so the yeah, public, yeah, the, I think we're, we're we're still adjusting to that, right? I think that, you're right. It just that, happened, yeah, right. I mean, in, this, in the large picture of things, it's really you know of this you know 50 year industry or whatever it is, only in the last five. Well, I, it was probably pretty bumpy at the beginning too, but we had this long stretch of calm, and now, like we're talking about in the last three to five, it's just been wow, bat the hatches, yeah. folks, you know. Yeah, we'll see yeah. what happens. And this public lands battle is, you know, these things seem like they're springing up like waves on the beach. Everything, every time you turn around, there's a new battle. Um, how, they are. What do you, how can we do more? What do you, what else do you think we can do to to keep fighting that? We're doing a lot, but I always wonder: Are we doing the right things? Do we need to be louder? Do we need to be more controversial? What is it that we can really smack them in the head, kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, you're right. They do seem to be they, regrettably popping up all over the place. Um, you know, they seem to be largely driven at the federal level um, right now. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think that that what do we do differently? I, I was in D.C. a couple of weeks ago, early December, um, doing some lobbying. And I had somebody there who, who certainly understands politics better than me say the line that, like, the outdoor industry is, is you know, we're good at protesting, <laughs> but we're not yet very good at politics. Oh, okay. And, mm. uh, and I, and I thought, you know, I thought a lot about that line, mm-hmm. you know, and, and OIA has got, look, we got super good government affairs staff, right. like doing really good stuff in DC. And so I don't think the line is critical of that work. I think it was really acknowledging that we are this diffuse kind of grassroots industry. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're, we're good at getting fired up about things that, you know, like public lands, but we're still pretty unsophisticated in how we compete in DC. Mm, and uh, so I guess what I'd say is like, we got to keep up the fight at the federal level, you course, know, and, right. and that's everything from our lobbying efforts to the fly-ins to the Capitol summit we do, mm-hmm. you know, that, that on the ground press and flesh in DC thing. Right. Um, but, but the piece I think I, <clears throat> I'd, encourage us to add in is remembering that it's also a local battle Mm -hmm. and you know and i actually think at the local level whether that's state or county or city um we're doing a lot better Mm -hmm. frankly Mm -hmm. and and i think that we can continue to really gain ground there i think about you know we we've gotten a bunch of state office of outdoor recreation right created and funded and and i think Mm -hmm. we got the opportunity to get a bunch more of those funded california's on the cusp yeah yeah, totally. Right. So those are yeah. super exciting things. And I, you know, you, you, I think tons of bond measures have gotten passed locally to support parks and open space and all that stuff. And so I, while it's really frustrating at the federal level right now, I think there's lots and lots of opportunity at, at the state and local level for mm-hmm. us to really make some positive progress. And um, and so I get excited about that end of things. And I, I think, you know, when we talk about city councils and county commissions and, right. and state legislatures, um, you know, uh, we can, as an outdoor industry, make a lot of progress in those spaces right now. Right. Were you, so. Do you remember a couple of years ago, there was an event at Cafe Molise outside, um, I think it must have been an outdoor industry event or maybe Conservation Alliance event, and um, Steve Barker was about to take the microphone to say something to the crowd, and he handed it over to a guy from, I think it was Seattle, a politician, and that guy really laid it on us about how just what you're talking about he says i need you people to you know it's great that you go on facebook and you go sign these petitions and do all that stuff but what i need is you to come down to my office get a bunch of your friends and tell us tell me what you want me to do you know so we meet face to face have that conversation then go back and talk to all your monks your friends and then when i do do it or if i don't do it get those same guys and come back down to the office and kick my butt about it and that's <laughs> that's to your point about that local thing whether it's you know at the state yep. level or just go beat up on your county commissioner you know whatever it is and also don't just beat up on them show them the love too when they do things that we support so Totally. Right. Yeah. And, and that goes all the way back to getting out and voting, you yeah, know, and making right, sure that right, we, we yeah. are 
supporting people in that are running for office that, that share our values. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and so we need to we need to speak with our vote too. Yeah, that's right. That's a good point. Um, so let's shift gears a little bit. What are you most excited about for the show to Den- moving to Denver other than you don't have to travel so far? Because it's still a bit of a trek for you, isn't it? From, from Yeah, uh, yeah. It's still, you know, it's a three and a half or so hour drive down. Yeah. Um, but I, I got to be careful about complaining about that when <laughs> lots of people are flying in for yeah, it. Right. Um, you know, if, if I were going to joke about it, I'm excited for a full strength cocktail. Um, <laughs> You're the second person that said that. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Wallenfeld said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of years of bad martinis in Salt Lake. Exactly. Um, yeah, and only those of us that were at the first Salt Lake shows can can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so being more serious about it, you know, I think coming to Denver kind of has two things. One. I think the change of venue just gives the opportunity for, I'll say, a renewed level of energy and excitement yeah. around the show. Totally agree. Um, you know, a little bit of just a change, you know, a change of routine, a change of pace. Uh, geez, I don't know where I'm going to go to dinner. Right. Um, right. You know, um, uh, change of routine's good. And then I, I think the cool thing, you know, Colorado and Denver specifically have been just super welcoming. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the state has really bent over backwards to try and get the show here and then be supportive of the show. And yeah. um, I think what's cool is we'll get the opportunity to highlight a state that, that really seems to understand the value of outdoor recreation and the recreation economy and mm-hmm. um, just sort of, uh, I'll say, put a nice bow on on the whole outdoor industry yeah yeah um, i talked to Luis so. a few weeks ago they're doing some great things state level out there it's awesome totally yeah. and, and and they're super excited to have the show and get yeah. to showcase some of the things they're doing right um and so i think it's just you know renewed energy and excitement and um uh, i think that will be good for us just broadly as an industry mm-hmm. great um, and does Smart World have any specific events planned? I'm sure you guys are doing something. Everybody's doing cocktails every night like they usually do. But do you have any big <laughs> to support in anything bigger than that? Not that that's not yeah, enough. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we're not. Yeah, we're we're certainly going to have cocktails. Um, we're we're not doing anything really crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like lots of folks, we're gonna we're selling product in the booth this year to support POW and Conservation oh, Alliance. Cool. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been doing that for a few years and we like doing that, mm-hmm. you know, just connect the dots in lots of good ways. Yeah. Um, and those are two great organizations that we, we support. Um, and I think the whole outdoor industry generally supports. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, great. one, one interesting thing I, I haven't figured out, I don't think we know exactly how we're going to activate on this yet, but we've got a pop-up store going on Larimer Street right oh, now. Oh, interesting. In, 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 yeah, in an empty retail space. We we popped it up for the holidays to mm-hmm. kind of test some things. And, and so it'll still be live um, when the show's going on, and I think we'll probably figure out how to do some activations around that. Just yeah. It ended up being a really cool view into our brand, and so I'd like to show it to more people. Yeah, well, if you guys want to do anything podcast-related, I'd happy happy to do something live there, a, a live uh I haven't entered the streaming world yet, but I'm sure I can figure it out. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be totally interesting. Yeah, cool. I appreciate that offer. Yeah, sure. Um, so, what other outdoor activities do you participate in? You fly fish. I know you cycle because you once you were part of the group that rode to OR last summer. In I was. Oh, yeah, awesome. that was our our tenth tenth ride to OR. Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah, I felt like when I when I joined Smart World, I I didn't. Uh, I was, I've been a mountain biker for a long time, but I really haven't been a road biker. And, uh, and so I had to turn myself into a road biker to survive that ride. Um, but it was great. And, and we're in the process right now of crafting a new route so that we can ride to Denver. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah. And I, I, I'll plant the seed here. Our, our team will probably get really mad at me, but I think <laughs> we're going to, we're going to do our third night. We're going to end in Boulder and then we're planning a, a big community ride from Boulder to the show. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, and we're going to welcome sort of as many people as we can to come join us. And right. so we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to spread that word with a little more clarity, but I, I think there's going to be a cool thing um, that we'll do around that summer show. Well, you heard it here um, first folks plan on a ride from Boulder to Denver this summer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it should be super cool. Be fun. Um, you know, in terms of other stuff, I, I I'm just, just generally an outdoor, my family is an outdoor family, mm-hmm. you know? So, mm-hmm. We, we fish and camp and raft in the summertime and, um, you know, wintertime we're, we're sort of spoiled now here in Steamboat. We yeah. do a lot of ski. <laughs> um, 
I, I'm I'm having to sharpen up my tele ski, skis after a bunch <laughs> of years and nice. um, doing more backcountry stuff and and so um, we're we're fortunate in that regard for sure. Great. And uh, do you have any suggestions or advice for someone wanting to get into the outdoor biz or maybe grow their career if they're already in the outdoor biz? Yeah, yeah. You know, the, for the folks that are already in, um, you mentioned it a little earlier with Stacia. I, you know, I think there's some really cool opportunities in the space right now, like the Future Leaders Academy mm-hmm. that Stacia helps run, mm-hmm. um, that, that OIA puts on. Um, I think that's an awesome program. It's, it's starting program. its third mm-hmm. year, third cycle. Yeah. Um, and we've had just a really good response to that. Um, you know, I think there's things like the sustainability working group um, mm-hmm. that OI help, helps facilitate that can be a great networking opportunity and, um, you know, help fundamentally move the industry forward on sustainability. Um, you know, we've got lots of great conservation organizations that you can get involved with that I think help create those relationships in the space. It's, you know, it's somewhat of an insular industry, right? So uh, you, you'll meet outdoor industry people in all these conservation organizations. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about the network. Right, right. Um, you know, so, and I think the same is somewhat true for folks trying to get into the space. I, I think, you know, when I talk to people that are trying to get in, I, I always caution them that I think we're, we're an overly insular industry. You know, we always <laughs> want to be hiring folks who have outdoor industry experience. And, right. and that can be really hard for people who are trying to get into the space. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's where, that's where things like volunteering with conservation organizations and um, places like that will just give you exposure to the people in the industry. Right. Um, you know, and I think just help you network your way in. Mm, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's good suggestions, both of those. And uh, do you have any daily routines you use to keep your sanity? Do you meditate, exercise? No. Oh. I wish I meditated. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of folks have said that too. <laughs> yeah, you know, Hard to find I, the time, uh, right? How do you how do you find the twenty minutes or thirty minutes of doing nothing? It's... Totally, it's hard to create that space. I, I am pretty dependent on exercise for sanity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I wish I could figure out how to get a bit more of both exercise and sanity. Um, <laughs> You know, but even just getting outside, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge, I'm hugely dependent on being outdoors yep, um, cool. for, for just uh, probably like lots of us in the industry. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, being, getting, getting outside gives me a chance to recharge a bit. There you go. Every day. Yeah. And how about books? You're, yeah. a big, you're a big reader. Do you have any favorite books or do you give books as gifts? You know, I, I love to read. I, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I don't consume as many books anymore as I, I would like to. I, um, <laughs> You know, one of my favorites is a book called All the Pretty Horses. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard of that. McCarthy wrote that. What was, um, the name? what was the guy's name again? His name's Cormac McCarthy. Oh, yeah. And, and, yeah. yeah, and the book's, I mean, it's probably now 15 or 20 years old. Nah, it's probably not 20, but it's... Um, you know, I grew up, my, my family raised horses. We had a little horse farm. Oh, and cool. uh, and so I've, I've always been a sucker for both horses and big Western landscapes. Uh-huh. And uh, I feel like that book really pulls both in in a, um, just a beautiful way. Yeah, he wrote um, a bunch of good books. He, he wrote a trilogy of some sort, didn't he? He did. All the Pretty Horses is the first of three okay. in, in that trilogy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think it's... Uh, you know, I don't know what I know, but I think it's the best by far mm-hmm. within that, that group of books. Cool. Awesome. Well, we'll link to that in the show notes. And uh, do you have a favorite piece of outdoor gear under $100? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is going to sound super self-serving, but a, a great pair of Merino socks. There you go. Uh, yep. I, yeah. I, uh, I, I have to admit, I didn't fully appreciate a pair of great socks until I got here. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I say now, like, if you've never worn a great pair of Merino socks, you'll never go back once you do. Yeah, no, they're great. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so yeah. it's, uh, I think, a super easy gift. When I was with Eagle Creek, uh, we shared a rep. Uh, Mike Sullivan down in Texas did Smart Wool yeah. and Eagle Creek, and he always spiffed us out in socks. I have never gone back. They're fabulous. So that's a good That's yeah. a good, uh, a good choice. And... Uh, Let's see, before I ask my next question, after we say goodbye at the end, you don't have to hang up. I want to see what you thought. I think I forgot to tell you that. I'll edit, no, that. Sure. I'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say or ask of our audience before we wrap up? Um, boy, what would I say? I, I mean, I'd love to leave folks with a sense of optimism for the outdoor industry. Um, uh, you know, I was thinking about this going into outdoor retailer and, and, you know, the new year and all this, I, I think outdoor continues to have just 
unlimited opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's certainly noise and everything that we've talked about right now going on in the space, but um, there's so many trends moving our direction in the, in the world that I think we just have lots and lots of opportunity. And so yeah. I, I think we got to remember that the glass is half full rather than half empty these days. Yeah, um, we're, we're still a young industry relatively. I mean, when you look at the total. auto industry or some of these huge businesses that have been around for, you know, eons, we're infants. <laughs> yep, we're we're just getting started, and I think the best days are still ahead. Yeah. And and so, you know, I, I'm also a big believer in momentum in businesses and industries, and so kind of getting us shifted toward optimistic and and a positive future, I think is is really powerful. Yeah. And uh, and we we sell awesome stuff, right. and and right. we help people get outdoors and lead better lives. You know, and um, how cool is that? Yeah, we sell so, toys. I mean, it's great. Yeah. Adult, yeah, you know, get outside and have yeah. fun. Yeah, and then the other the other thing I <laughs> see that plant is just encourage everybody to get involved. Mm, you know, it, yeah. it, and what I mean by that is um, these are rather unprecedented times, and and we need people to step up and and get engaged in sustainability and get engaged in conservation and um, you know make sure that we are are protecting those places that matter to us personally and professionally. Right. Right. That's good advice. And how can people find you on uh, email, Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn? Yeah. What's, what's your favorite? What's the best? Man, I'm, I'm, this is going to show that I'm sort of a Luddite. Um, <laughs> I, you, you can find me on email. <laughs> All right. That's perfect. No, that's good. Well, you're a busy guy. You don't have time to tweet and post Instagram, and I get it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love the idea of being connected that way, but yeah, yeah. boy, I, I just can't do it right now. And so, um, yeah, you can get me on email. I, I, I try to be good about responding. Um, and uh, yeah, I would love to love to connect. Yeah, all right. We'll we'll, uh, we'll link to your email and we'll link to the Instagram and Facebook feeds for Smart Will in the show notes so everybody can see what cool stuff you guys are doing there. That'd be awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks, Trip. Thanks for the time. It's been great chatting with you. And uh, Absolutely. I'll yeah, enjoyed the conversation, Rick. Thank you. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Travis Campbell. You can catch up with Travis by email at Travis underscore Campbell at VFC.com. That's T-R-A-V-I-S underscore C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. You'll find links to everything we discussed in the show notes at theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash episode slash 071. I would be grateful if you visit iTunes and give us a rating and review, and be sure to share this episode or tell a friend about it. If you're enjoying the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can support the show by visiting theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash patron and see the many ways you can support the show. Thanks for listening. Today's podcast is brought to you by In Motion Hosting. I've used InMotion Hosting to host my websites for years. Rick Say's Photos, Blog, Stillwaters Consulting, and the Outdoor Biz Podcast are all hosted with InMotion Hosting. If your New Year's resolution is to publish a blog, produce a podcast, or simply secure a domain name, go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash InMotion and sign up with them today. They make it simple and quick to get a new site up and running with easy installation tools. That's theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash InMotion. Get going today. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. Be sure and go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com where you'll find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Thanks for listening, and until next time, be sure and make time to get outside.